Ascension Women Ascension is a platform that is working across 81 countries to empower women and support the sustainable development goals. In our skills development department, we design and bring forward training programs to, to participants excel in their professional journeys. Today, we are collaborating with SkillQuest, that is an educational startup dedicated to help students and professionals by upskilling them, enhancing their online visibility, and preparing them for the future. Resume building workshop, Mr. Asadullah Khan. Today, he will be sharing his insights on resuming building, a crucial topic for anyone seeking internships, jobs, or scholarship. In this session, in our today's session, we will learn how you can craft an ETS-friendly resume that not only stands out, but also get noticed by recruiters. With his background in project management, skill development, and search engine optimization, and as experience at the HR, he will guide us through crafting his unit that not, not just a list of experience, but powerful tools that land you to interviews. So can we start, Mr. Asad? Yes, thank you, Nayab. Okay, I'm handing over the stage to you. Starting with the session, uh... I will follow it. Uh, so let's start with what is the basic difference between a resume and a CV. I would like to know how many professionals we have here who have industry experience of more than five years. If you can just quickly send a message. So like, I have an idea. And mostly my sessions are <clears throat> in Urdu. Uh, there are not many uh, opportunities that I get to have a session in English. So if you face a little difficulty in that language barrier, I apologize in advance for that. But hopefully, there will not be much issue. So, do we have anyone who has experience of more than four to five years here? Basically, resume is a one page document that we usually use that is usually used by fresh graduates or people who have less than five years of experience so when you have experience more than five years you will be using our cv uh, because uh, it is difficult to detail all the experience in one page secondly cv is mostly used in scholarships and academic purposes but i will not be very much focusing on that as i have more experience with the corporate and private sector so i will talk i will be talking more about the resumes that you can that can help you get a job in the job sector so uh, this the template that i normally use is accepted worldwide but uh, there is not no necessity that you have to use the same template or uh, there has been a debate about what kind of templates to use but uh, whether we should use a profile picture we should I use we, sh we should use a picture or not in the resume so uh, i will be talking more about it in detail but in short you can use any template that you want just there are some common best practices across the industry that can help you that can help your resume stand out in the market uh, one more thing is, uh, even if we do all the best practices, we make it very ATS friendly and everything. Uh, by the way, ATS friendly is uh, ATS score. ATS friendly is a buzzword that uh, not a lot. This, this has been made very common by trainers all across the world. To I don't know sell the trainings or not, but uh, it is not a very complex topic to understand it is there are some just simple practices that you can use that will make your that is looking for a few words in your resume and if those words are present in your resume then the AI is going to shortlist that uh, I will share some insights from a startup as well who are working uh, with us on shortlisting resumes using AI as all right, so the basic, diff I think there is no one who has experience of more than five years, no one has mentioned. So I will be focusing only on the resume part, which will be useful for everyone. So basically resume is one page 
document focused only on the job that you are applying for resume is a document more than one page to it it can be five page as well that is used mostly in uh, the academia sector in the scholarship sector uh, or when you have experience of more than five years even then cv is usually used in academia when uh, you are applying for let's say uh, a teaching role or a scholarship where you need all uh, where you need to mention all kind of experiences so when we come to resume it is usually said that a uh, hiring manager spends around 3 to 5 seconds on uh, on the initial screening of the resume so so let's say when you have a resume in front of you if you are a hiring manager you you open a job you will be getting hundreds of resumes so hiring managers really do not have the time to go through all of them so let's say let's say they are not using any ai or they are not using any ats systems they are just doing it manually so when they're doing it manually it is uh, really difficult to spend a lot of time on the resumes so that is why we have to stick to one page and we have to stick to the most relevant details only so uh, the purpose would be when a resume it was in front of the interviewer to the recruiter or the hiring manager so uh, in a bird eye view he will be able to we should be able to see something from your experience that is relevant to uh, the job he is uh, looking for so uh, the main coming to the main important sections that should be in a resume again you can follow any template i will show you one but you can follow any template you want and to everyone that you should have a separate contact number uh, one uh, contact that you usually have for your friends and family no no kya hai so you you can hear me now right yes you are audible now so uh i usually recommend everyone to have a separate number for friends colleagues and everything and have a separate number for your family and friends this helps a lot okay 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 so uh, have a separate number that helps a lot uh, because there will be a lot of spamming from different kind of people you will get to scam messages and a lot of things once your number goes per, uh, public so better to use a separate number for that for those purposes then uh, coming to the e email that you will be providing email so most of the times i have seen is uh, people use uh, the emails that is provided to them by their educational institutes when they are in the university okay uh, that an employer from with using those email uh, those email can be terminated any time by the university or facing any kind of issue in providing emails or anything so it is better to have a gmail and 
address that you can use it. I think it has stopped again. I guess he's disconnected from the meeting. So let's just wait for a few minutes until he joins us again. We can't hear your voice. Okay, we can hear you. All right, so I was talking about the email that you should have an email that you can use for a longer run. There is there should be no issue of uh, the email getting terminated at a later stage for uh, because there are a lot of companies who keep the resumes in their uh, talent pool and they reach out to you even after a whole year or sometimes even after two years. So it is better to have an email that is working. Again, uh, there is your contact number as well. The email should be professional as it uh, it should contain the least amount of numbers as possible. Obviously, we have to sometimes go with having numbers in our email because uh, the com uh, common names do usually are not able to get a unique email address. Coming, coming to the LinkedIn profile URL. So uh, LinkedIn profile URL when LinkedIn, first of all, has become a kind of message. really very mindful about LinkedIn profile these days they do check what kind of activities you are doing what kind of uh, projects you are involved in what kind of experience you have so LinkedIn is kind of a whole CV already so LinkedIn is not a resume it is a CV it contains all of your experiences so uh, it should contain all of your experiences and you should uh, it is kind of becoming a necessary to have an active LinkedIn profile. Again, uh, when you are adding your LinkedIn URL to your uh, your resume, it should be uh, a professional one. I uh, let me show you how it looked like uh, originally and what you can do to make it more professional. Just a second, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, I hope it is shared. Uh, Fatima, I think your host can you or Nurul Huda, someone can you please disable this uh, running feature? Okay, I will check the settings. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if you look in the search bar, this is how my URL looks like. But normally, when you have created a new profile, there will be your name, uh, the name you have written for the profile, and numbers in front of it like like 10 to 15 numbers in front of it you can edit your profile url from here in laptop and there is an option in mobile as well you can search on google how to edit it on mobile so, so use this feature edit your url so it looks more professional it should be it should be close to your name as close as possible so i'm using a brand name uh, some freelancers use it you can use it if you want but uh, if you are in the corporate sector, you can simply use your name and edit it from here. Okay, uh, this was about the personal information. I have covered name, 
phone number that should be an active whatsapp number then your email then your linkedin url and portfolio link is applicable for those who uh, i was not moving tabs were you able to see the link in my profile all right okay okay let me show you okay Okay, so the, this is what your profile URL looks like. This will be the link that you will be using in your resume and it can be edited from this part. This is all I shared. Okay, then coming to the portfolio link, portfolio link is applicable to those people who are from backgrounds that can have portfolios. For example, you are a graphic designer or you are a content writer or maybe a software engineer or a design engineer. So all these fields they use, they can have different portfolios. For example, you have designed a project for a client or for a company that you can publicly use. You can add that to your portfolio and you can display it in your resume. So there are some fields that might not be using portfolio. So you can see uh, if your field is relevant to that. Then this was all about personal information. Uh, about, uh, there is a there was a debate once going on about using a picture in the resume or not. So it is not really relevant anymore simply because uh, if someone wants to look at your picture, they can go to your LinkedIn profile and have a look at your picture. So it is not really uh, needed in your resume. Then again, uh, coming to the education part, after personal information, I have stopped screen sharing. There is, I'm not sharing screen. Okay. Then coming to education, in the education, you will be listing your most recent education first, and then you will be listing your uh, the education that you had before that. For example, you are a master student. So you will be listing master's education at the top and then you will mention your bachelor's education. Again, uh, coming to the FSC or intermediate, uh, usually in Pakistan, I don't know what it is called uh, outside Pakistan, but anything before university that is really not, really not relevant in your job sector. So you will only be needing the most recent education so uh, sometimes when people are just graduating, they do not have um, too much to write in their resume. So they usually write about their uh, intermediate education as well, the education that was before university. But it is not really relevant. Think about it. Why would a uh, hiring manager need your intermediate or education before your professional field? So try to stick to the most recent education that you had your bachelor's or your master's education. <clears throat> then coming to the professional experience. In the professional experience, you can mention two types of experiences. You can uh, add your job experience or your internship experience. Uh, there was another debate that I that was very common in the past few months that fellowships should be uh, fellowships or volunteer opportunities or uh, there are some practical courses, those should be added in the professional experience or not. So uh, after discussing with some of the HRs in my professional network, we have come to the conclusion that they are not your, they are not professional experiences. So you cannot really add those in the professional experiences. Okay. So you will be only be adding the jobs and then internships that you have done in your professional experience section. Let me clarify one thing here again. When you are applying for a job, focus only on the experiences that uh, that are when you are applying for a job, focus only on the experiences that are relevant to that job. So, uh, for example, once for uh, a year or two ago, I was hiring for HR interns. So uh, all the resumes I were getting were from other fields. So that is not an issue in HR. You can have people from other fields, but they were mentioning the experiences 
that were purely purely technical in, engineering for example their engineering projects or uh, too much uh, their engineering relevant projects they were mentioning those in their resumes so even if you are mentioning something from a different field try to relate it to the job that you are applying for for example if someone is applying for an hr job who uh, not having an Uh, specific experience in hr before you are let's say you are a fresh graduate in engineering and you want to pursue your pursue your career in hr so if you are applying for internship so mention those aspects of the projects uh, of your uh, field projects that are relevant to the hr field not uh, those things that are not relevant to hr field i will give more examples later about this as well and i will show you some examples too so uh, jobs and internships only in your professional section and again you have to follow the same uh, order that we were following previously in education the most recent experience is first and the older experience is later so till now we have covered three sections the personal information section the professional experience section uh, sorry the personal information the education and then the professional experience then coming to extra curricular activities and volunteer opportunity uh, volunteer activities that you have done this is kind of more more relevant to fresh graduates or those who are in their university time because uh, the uh, more you have experience the more uh, these extra curricular activities become irrelevant uh, these extra curricular are more important at the start of your career because corporate sector nowadays is looking not just for good knowledge <clears throat> of your field but <clears throat> they also want to see if you are good at team work if you have worked with teams if you have skills like conflict resolution if you have uh, if you are doing something other than your studies as well basically because you when you are going to a corporation you will not be just sitting at your desk and uh, doing academic tasks like we are used to in university so when you are in a real life scenario when you are in a corporation you are more focused on how you are behaving with your colleagues how you are behaving with your managers how you are behaving with your juniors uh, your subordinates and even uh, people who are irrelevant to you uh, irrelevant direct they are not people who are not directly linked to you in your department they may be in other departments how you are communicating with those people how you are com- communicating with your customers so all of these things are very important and these come from the extra curricular activities that we uh extra curricular or volunteer activities that we uh usually do in our university time or after that uh, this includes the fellowships and any other certifications that uh we can get so uh these things are important at the start of the career so you can mention these things in your certific- certifications uh, or volunteer or extra curricular section you can make one in your resume i will show you an example once i am done with this as well uh some of these can include your society experiences uh, societies some universities call those societies some there might be clubs in your societies or there uh, might be organizations you volunteered for or maybe a fellowship that you attended so these are all kinds of extra curricular things that you can uh, mention in your extra curricular activities especially when you are a fresh graduate so when you have experience of 3 to 4 years then uh, it is commonly commonly it is understood that you have that kind of team work experience and uh, professional experience that you can now talk to people while sitting in an organization uh, almost this is almost uh, all about but you need to include in your resume so uh, if there is something left if there is a skill or interest there is left and you have still have space in your resume then you can mention it in one or two lines in the end uh, now let me show you a template that i usually follow and a lot of i have seen a lot of people following this template again uh, i am saying it is not a necessity to follow the same template you can use any template you want i will be share, uh, still sharing some best practices that will help you stand out you can use any template that you want 
so the personal information section uh, i i mentioned one thing in the start that you should not be using your university provided email but you can see i have mentioned it here uh, the reason is uh, i i do not usually use this email for professional purposes this is only for training purposes so uh, that is why this is written here and this was the resume that i prepared for uh, our society a club in, club interview in nest so that was a requirement to add my university email there but you will be using your you will be using your gmail addresses here that are available to you in the long run uh, contact number linkedin profile url and portfolio for those where that is applicable i hope the screen is shared right uh, yes yes we can see your screen okay thank you then coming to education like i mentioned most recent education masters then your bachelor's uh, okay uh, there was another debate about um, whether you should mention your cgpa and your resumes or not so uh, a general recommendation would be if uh, specifically talking about the private sector only if you have very high gpa or very low gpa then it is not recommended to mention if you have some uh, moderate to above average level of grades then you can mention the reason uh, but, but again there is something else as well for example uh, generally it is perceived uh, in the hiring managers that people who have very high gpas they tend to be less social because uh, it's believed that they are only focused on uh, book readings and theoretical subjects uh, and theoretical things so this is the common perception i am not advocating that it is the uh, right thing to have this perception or not but this is a common perception that we have especially in pakistan i am not really uh, experienced about foreign countries so uh, this is a perception that we have here but if you have a high gpa and you have extra curricular experiences as well then you can maybe you can list uh, your gpa as well so it is kind of a subjective thing there is no real hard and fast answer to uh, if you should mention or not it uh, sometimes depend on the psyche of the hiring manager as well that would be different from people to people but if you have a gpa that is uh, somewhat between Uh, in pakistan we have a grade of 4 out of 4 gps so if you have something between 3 to 3.5 or 3.6 that is considered good and above average uh, if you uh, as you go up as well so that is a fine gpa to mention uh, again if you don't mention your gpa that does not really make a difference it is all about what kind of experience and what kind of skills and uh, how you are uh, able to present yourself in the interview that matters uh, again it does not have anything to do with your short listing if it is important they normally ask that in the form uh, the recruitment form that they share with you coming to experiences so this is one of my job experiences i have listed the name of the company then what does the company do i have mentioned in a small one line then you can see these are the experiences that i had in this role before that i was working as an associate in the same organization these were my responsibilities at that time uh, i am just showing you how the template is i will explain further as well personal information education professional experience extra curricular and volunteer experiences we are from my bachelor's and then you have if still space is left you can use additional experiences okay so again coming back i have stopped sharing screen So, do you have any questions till this point? Yes, a few participants share their question in the comment section. 
Aisha is asking, is there any specific? Uh, yes, you can check it out. Yes, I can check. Uh, I can check, and if there are other questions, you can share those as well in the chat. I will be answering those as well. Is it the end of the session? Okay. Yes. Is there any specific reason for adding the LinkedIn link in a separate line? Okay, Aisha, it just looks. Uh, it is just kind of formatting. You can use it. Uh, it is not looking bad. You can use any format, like I said. You can use any template. What was, what about passport side photograph on the CV? How it impacts selection process? Is it advisable to always have such small head shot in CV? Okay. Uh, usually in Pakistan, uh, normally in the corporate sector, we are not using pictures anymore. I have, uh, I have asked this question from. Different hiring managers who are in the, who have been in the industry for like 15 to 20 years, they say that it does not really matter. But the advice here would be look out, uh, see what kind of company you are applying for. Uh, whatever company you are interested in, makes uh, try to do some networking there and ask the employees who are working there already what kind of resume templates are being followed there. The picture has nothing to do with selection, but uh, again, there is no single rule that you can apply to every organization in the world. But the, sa the same resume template, this resume template, I have used it in uh, multiple companies and it has uh, given me good results uh, in Pakistan, in the private sector, even in the MNCs and in startups. Everywhere I have performed, uh, this resume uh, template has performed well for me. But once I shared it uh, for a foreign job, in I guess it was maybe in Dubai or in Gulf somewhere, and they said uh, you have written too many, too much details in it. There's uh, in the Gulf they are still following those uh, templates that you will usually find on Canva where you your skills. So the point is there is no one rule that apply, that fits all. The best thing I have found is to uh, ask and network with uh, the employees that are working in your desired organization. They will be able to give you the best advice. Can you use Canva templates? You can use any template that you want. Just try to add the best practices. I will be sharing a few more things so if you can use those best practices you can use any template that you want i found in educational background there is gap in the years like best 21 and the master 24 so do we provide certain activities during the time We can't hear your voice, Sarasat. Okay. So I was saying, uh, you're only your most recent education that is relevant to your uh, field that you're applying for is relevant. So uh, the gap that you are uh, that you have mentioned about. So uh, I took a two year gap before pursuing my master's degree. So that gap is covered in my uh, professional experience because at uh, in that time I was doing a job. So it is already covered. So yes, you can cover that gap 
so let's say you were in uh, in the job market for 5 years and then you are, and you then then you took a gap for 2 years for your masters education so that will already be covered in your education section so you do not really need to uh, do anything else about it think is in a great place to find a vinazul the can thing okay uh, yes uh, aksha has mentioned that this can also linkedin can lead to other people offering you jobs yes that helps a lot once your profile is established on linkedin pe uh, people approach to you by themselves uh, once in a month i uh, once or twice uh, uh, once in two months or sometimes once every month i get a job opportunity for search engine optimization uh, hr hiring managers are always look out for profiles that are relevant to their companies so they will just reach out to you and ask if you are available to join their company so yes it helps a lot uh, how to address acha so it is uh, i might not be able to cover the linkedin question right now can i use my internships at the university as my first experience for new graduate yes you can definitely use your internships as your first professional experiences and when you try to write a resume using your data from linkedin profile sure are we supposed to mention the experience which we get before the bachelor's degree and also we add that experience with certificates or not we want to us as a mohammad tahir there is sometimes a requirement from the companies from the organizations that experience uh, after the bachelor's count uh, after the after your professional degree counts Uh, uh this is sometimes an issue not always but if that experience is relevant to your uh, field and uh, if you can justify that experience and you are if you are able to prove that experience in front of the hiring manager then definitely go for it and certificates are uh, not really required at the initial stage certificates are only required uh, later on when you are in the second or third hiring phase like you have uh, initially you have cleared the initial interview initial for interview you have cleared your uh, initial hiring interview when you are at your salary discussion stages sometimes at that point you might be needing uh, a letter from the previous organization the experience letters that uh, the organizations provide but even not all the organizations are asking for those letters so yes that is kind of subjective to Uh, what kind of organization you are applying for all right uh, coming back to the resume then uh, you can keep asking the question in chat i will come back to that question answers as well okay so the practices the things that i am not uh, that now i am about to share will help you in creating an ats friendly resume i am again uh, saying it that ats friendly or ats scores is just a just a buzzword that has been uh, highlighted again and again again uh, and again in the industry it is not something you should be very uh, how what would you say like it it should not be something you should be too much worried about just uh, that uh, i i get a lot of queries about this stuff that uh, our ats score is very low people normally use some online tools so there is not an uh, there is this is not a very big issue there is no need to be very much worried about it i will i am sharing just uh, some of the things that you can use and then you do not need to worry about the ats score okay when you are making a resume try to follow four rules first of all try to keep it as simple as possible uh, no need to use very difficult english vocabulary in your resume use simple to understand language that the person the hiring manager is able to understand uh, keep in mind that the hiring manager is not someone who has studied english literature or whatever uh, language you are following uh, that person is not an expert of that language he, he might be using it as, as a second second language 
so even when i was working uh, as an hr in the startup so uh, i do not have a background in english literature so there used to be people who used very complex words in uh, their resumes so i understand those people were coming from english background and they might people even search difficult words to i don't know sound cool or maybe they want to show that they are uh, very proficient in english but if i am not able to instantly connect with your resume when it is in front of me that it then it gets difficult to uh, maybe your shortlisting gets a little difficult because i'm not able to connect with you or any hiring manager is not able to connect with you uh, this is just from something from a personal experience you can just use simple english uh, but yes you def- you should definitely use the technical terms in your field for example let me give an example of uh, i hope uh, digital marketing is important for uh, is, is is really common so uh, let me give an example from digital marketing so uh, Uh, in digital marketing you will be using words like impressions engagements metrics uh, or maybe you are mentioning some of the tools that we use in search engine optimization uh, or if you are using such uh, words like on page seo off page seo technical semantic seo in applying for an search engine optimization specialist then those technical jargons or words that are relevant you can add those words in your resumes i'm just talking about use simple vocabulary when when uh, writing simple english descriptions so first rule keep it simple second rule use <clears throat> summary skills so what are summary skills summary skills let uh, let me break it down for you so what we use and uh, you have must have seen the canva templates that are usually available on uh, google or on canva that their people are just listing their skills for example you in every resume is in every resume you will find leadership skill listed in the resume so as an hiring manager how would how, how am i supposed to know uh, if you have leadership or not just by reading one word from your resume so leadership is a word that every person is using in their resume but not everyone has leadership uh, qualities uh, the leadership is not just about leading a team of 5 to 10 people leadership is in everyday activities but not everyone has those leadership qualities uh, those can be developed that is a separate thing but just for the sake of an example i'm saying this but let's make it a summary skill you are uh, using leadership in your resume you uh, then uh, you should be writing a description about it a summary about what kind of leadership have you showed in activities in in your projects or in your past experiences for example uh, you have worked on a project in in uh, in, in your university time so in that project you might have led a team of 4 to 5 members mention that and mention what kind of results you achieved in uh, that project so that will tell the recruiter that all right this person has mentioned leadership as their skill and they have also mentioned how they uh, exercised leadership in that experience which that they have mentioned so you see now your skill has become your summary skill it this your skill is not just a word there it it has a summary attached to it it has a description attached to it so uh second thing summary skills use summary skills then coming to quantification or the use of numbers in your resumes uh, quantification for example like i mentioned leadership led a team of 4 to 5 members so uh, where i was working previously i used to be uh, leading around 50 to 60 people during our uh, one of the during the hiring phases that we ran i used to lead 50 to 60 people 
and i've also worked with teams of uh, four to five people where i've been uh, where i was leading four to five people only so uh, you see the difference leading four people in a, a team of four people or leading a team of 10 people has a huge difference when you are uh, leading a team of 60 people so there is a skill there there are, there might be organizations who need, who might be leading people who uh need to lead four people or uh, some other organization that might be uh needing people who need to lead 60 people so you have to mention the scale that is quantification or use of number numbers use numbers is where you are showing results for example uh, let's say you are working in sales so you just uh, mentioned i was able to make 2000 dollar in sales in one week you see now that 2000 dollars is making an impact uh, and the time frame is also important for example if you say i was able to uh, make sales of 2000 dollars in five years now that is not an achievement you have to specify the achieve those results so these were the four things that you uh, should be careful about first of all keep it simple like there is a whole different world going on in chat but anyways yeah so keep it simple uh use some skills then quantification use of numbers and then results what were you able to achieve as a result of your services as a result of your experiences or whatever you are mentioning in your resume let's see this one this is a resume that i prepared for a, there was a club hr uh, hr club or society in uh, nust i was applying for the president president role so that required having experience in hr so summary skill the recruitment is a summary skill is a skill in hr okay let me tell you something here uh, i get this question a lot that we do not have relevant experience what to do so if i talk about my experience i have never really but specifically as an hr i was an associate then i was in then i was an assistant manager in operations and uh, alumni relations i have never specifically i never had the position of an hr but the kind of activities that i was uh, kind of activities or experiences i was involved in that organization i was able to acquire some hr skills as well so when i was preparing this resume i just googled uh, what kind of skills are commonly required from an hr uh, i found these all these uh, skills uh, then i related those skills to my experiences that i had and i mentioned those in the resumes so now you do not have a, what do you say an excuse that we do not have experiences people always have experiences you just need to find out how to present that experience in a these are the words that your ats system is looking for these are all the words so what is an ats system and how does it work so an ats system is just a simple tool or a software or maybe an ai based api uh, whatever you call it that is looking for some specific words in your resume those words are generally coming from the job descriptions that the companies share so when some uh, let's say someone is hiring for an hr manager so they 
they uh, must have mentioned the skills that are required from that hiring manager those skills can be recruitment training and development performance management policy and even these skills excel google sheets google forms zoom etc and these as well so i have mentioned all those words in this resume uh okay recruitment summary skill first of all keep it simple this is a simple template no fancy nothing simple english then summary skill uh, okay another thing whenever you are writing the description for your summary skill always start always start with an action verb that is in the uh, if you have if, if that is in, in the past then you will be using the third form of verb or if you are currently working in that role then you will be using the Oh, I don't know what uh, it was called. Let's say if this is hired. So if you are currently working, you would be use, using hiring or uh, conducting or managing. I don't know what it was called in English grammar. Uh, it, was, it has been years since I studied grammar. Forgot. About it. All right. Hired 21 interns over a period of one year. So you see, like I said, numbers then the time frame then i've also mentioned which domain is my expertise for hiring uh, then in the last part i have mentioned what, what what we were able to achieve what were the results i hope uh, i was able to explain these four rules again and this was my first time explaining these in english so it is kind of little telling coming back to the extracurricular and volunteer experiences so this is specifically relevant for fresh graduates or maybe who are still in university and looking for applying for internships uh, for interns for internships if you are able to make this kind of resume there is definitely a chance that you are going to be shortlisted. There is a high chance. There is a high chance because uh, normally people are using. Would you believe uh, I uh, have received resumes where there was there were only two lines mentioned at the top, only two lines, and this is not. This is you can ask any hiring manager who has been in the industry for five to six years or more. We all have similar experiences. Whenever I go and sit with HR professionals, we have, we always have similar experiences. Another common uh, issue that we are hiring managers, we as hiring managers are facing these days is uh, use of chat GPT without using brain, without using your, uh, what do you say? Akkal ke bagar istamal karte hai. So, nakal ke liye chahi hoti hai. I, I don't know how to translate this in English, but you have to use your brain when you are using chat GPT as well. Use it as a uh, uh, assistant. So, uh, for example, uh, I recently I was hiring for a position quite recently in the past few months, and the pers the person he uh, mentioned that he had achieved three lakh dollars in sales. So uh, out of curiosity, uh, I knew that person was using chat GPT was I just texted that person that please, would you be able to justify this experience? And that person was not, uh, he was not willing to admit that he used chat GPT. He, he was like, nine, uh, yes, I have that. Ex I have this experience. I did this, I did this. And when I asked two or three counter questions, finally, he, he just admitted that I copied I copied and uh, used it from chat GPT. So why are you so focused on destroying your image even before joining a company when you're doing things like this? Do you do I don't understand? Do people actually believe that your resumes are not going to be seen by people by hiring managers? 
uh, I really don't understand why people just uh, copy paste uh, these resumes and send it to hiring managers. It is a waste of our time as well. Uh, ask any hiring manager and they will tell you that people are just copy pasting material and then they are complaining that we do not get our resumes do not get shortlisted. So just don't do this to yourself. Don't bring this uh, difficulty on your professional career by don't ruin your career with your own hands. Use Use it as uh, as an assistant. Use ChatGPT as an assistant. Not do not let it direct you. All right, I got lost because that is an issue that is very common these days. Everyone is doing it. I know even uh, if I have spent a good two three minutes on it, but people will still be doing it. Uh, this is what I was saying, managing performance. It should be managed. It should be managed because this was a past experience. This is a mistake. Try not to make such mistakes. Okay, so this was what I was showing for the university graduates or uh, people who are just fresh graduates, not much experience. You can use the society experience or clubs, whatever you call that in your university. And when you are mentioning interest, try not to focus more on your uh, personal hobbies. Like I have seen people writing, sleeping in their resumes. Please try to avoid that. Uh, try to focus more on your professional interests. So for example, you are applying for a job that is, uh, for example, you are applying for a travel agency. Then you can mention hiring and traveling. Sorry, uh, not hiring, hiking and traveling, or maybe rock climbing as well. But when I am applying for the position of an HR, I will not be mentioning rock, uh, sorry, rock climbing as my interest. Rock climbing is something very dear to me, but I will not be mentioning that for a resume of an HR. So please be mindful of these things. These might seem very uh, simple things to some of you, but believe me, these are real life experiences that we have to face on a daily basis as HRs and as founders or whatever you say. Uh, one last thing, try to, not, not try to, this is a kind of a must. Use <clears throat> consistent formatting. Whatever template you're following, use consistent formatting. I have mentioned month and year here and here. And let's say I mention only year here, not uh, month. So it will be inconsistent. Try to be consistent in your uh, resumes. So let's say I am using these headings at this level. Then all of the headings will be in the same font and at the same level. Like uh, the same indent, let's say education is here and professional experience is also at the same level. Professional experience is not starting from here or here. Right? Uh, then if the summary skills, if you are talking about the summary skills, then all the summary skills are at the same level. They are starting at the same level. So use consistent formatting. Uh, there is one more thing that I would like to mention here is uh, this is not really but this is somewhat relevant to your interview. So let's say uh, there is a question in the interview. They will, uh, let's say if they ask you, uh, what is your core strength? And you say, my core strength is attention to detail. And uh, you say your core strength is attention to detail. And there are seven mistakes in your resume. Then now there is a conflict in what you are saying and what you have shown in your resume. So there's, be very mindful of what you are writing in your resume because all the questions will be from your resume. One advice, one piece of advice, never think that the person sitting in front of you, the hiring manager is a fool. Never think uh, in, in these lines. That person has been in your seat. Uh, 
during his early days of the career he knows what kind of things we do uh, never think that you are going to mention something that you are not experienced about and you are going to get around with it sometimes maybe people do get around those things but that is not a general case that is a rare case when people are able to get around with uh, the lies that they mention that you miss so try not to lie in your resume uh, be as honest as possible okay that is all that uh, i will be checking your questions in the chat <clears throat> when will the meeting be and uh, i'm also a okay. Okay, okay 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 we have the session till like 30 okay that's in the chat now so this is all from my side i'm only uh over here for the question so some people who are saying that they have to leave at nine please feel free to leave so if you can stay as certificates that's okay okay so for certificates requirement you can do as required by the organizers since we have covered almost all topics so you can leave now we will have a question and answer session so if you got any query or you have just uh, like participants have dropped their questions in the comment section. So you can raise your hand, you can unmute yourself, or you can write your questions again. So we can address them now. Okay, okay. I will prefer chat. Uh, that will that is a little easier for me. So please do tell again difference between CV oh. and resume. A resume is a one pager temp, a one pager document that uh, is used for jobs in the private sector mostly uh, for uh, resume is used mostly by the fresh graduates but if you have experience of more than five years then you can use a cv cv is a multi page document cv is usually used in the academic sector or for scholarships etc so for uh, people mostly who are here as fresh graduates you will be using resumes and resumes length should be one page only but about adding the months in short form or in complete spelling it doesn't really matter September you use short form short form is uh, like it will take less space it is not really very it is not a big issue that you should be worried about I would say use just SCP so can I add the certificates that I got from the webinar in my CV can I add it on LinkedIn also webinar that's okay i am this so specifically this webinar certificate this is really not something that is going to help you anywhere uh, uh it might hurt somebody's feelings but uh, usually i have a whole bundle of certificates from my bachelor's i never really used in my uh professional career anywhere so no one nobody cares I do not care how many resume webinars you have attended. You might have attended 100 resume webinars. How is that helping me in my organization? So uh, let's say you are applying for a job that is, uh, if uh, you are applying for a job that, uh, if uh, let's say your responsibility is making a resume is in that. job then but if you are applying for a job of uh, i don't know software engineer this is this certificate is not going to help you there but you can share it on linkedin as well to show people what kind of activities you are involved in that is relevant but uh, it's not relevant in your resumes uh, for resumes you can use certifications that are relevant to your field for example uh, if you are, let's say you are in the field of data analytics and you have done an Excel certification, that is something you need to add in your resume. For example, you are in the digital marketing uh, industry and you uh, you have done a certification in digital marketing, that is something relevant. Let's say you are in, in uh, engineer and you have done some kind of safety certification, that is something relevant. 
the collaboration okay stay with us okay thank you do you love to feedback so like then let have already quitting for certificate to post same same okay but yes you can post okay uh, coming to uh, uh, the other part of the question that was as uh, it should be posted on linkedin uh do post it on linkedin you can even add a screenshot of the meeting as well but keep in mind uh, that uh, a best practice to share a webinar that you have attended on resume uh, on linkedin is when you are sharing the learnings there as well uh, i would recommend if you can see some of the posts from our page skills quest page or from my profile or even from nurul hudas profile she is working with as well uh, not promoting anything just you can use and yeah, you can see from any profile that is uh, those people who are linked in with uh, linked to skills quest in their uh, because we teach content writing as well how to uh, so i am having a difficult time explaining it in english so when you are writing a post about a webinar that you have attended just uh, talk about the learnings that have been shared in the training because let's say you are just posting a certificate out there on linkedin how is that relevant to me that some some anything you are sharing on linkedin that should be uh, able to help me in some way all right so if you are posting a simple certificate how is that adding value to my life if your post is not adding value to my life why would i like to see that post in the first first place so this is the logic behind i but i'm saying that if you are posting the certificate on linkedin try to add so much details in your post that anyone who has not even attended this webinar uh, is able to get some kind of value for his or her resume so that will be uh, something worth worth posting just posting a simple screenshot of this webinar just posting a simple certificate of this webinar that is not something i am looking forward to so that CV and resume again. I I guess I already shared. No main ascension. Okay, HR committee has a question. Why should we hire you for the position? Who oh, the very I mentioned uh, specific strength that you have in that field that might be uh, differentiating you from the other people in the industry. can you add my extra curricular activities like playing different games participating in it and getting the prizes and certificates can i add these extra curricular activities you can add those but uh, only the professional ones like let's say you have participating in you have participated in ludo in your university time or uh, like uh, a chess competition that is not really relevant to your job or the field you are applying for but you have if you have participated in activities that are relevant to the field that involve team work that involve conflict resolution then that is something you should definitely add in your resume do keywords also matter in resume most of the time there is an issue with resume then Okay, the ATS issue. I've already mentioned the keywords that are the same. There keywords you can get those keywords from the job description. That's all you can do. Uh, yes, the companies in which I worked before the bachelor degree are not able to do, give me certificates. Of you can add those experiences in your uh, resumes, even if you do not have the certificates. let's say if you if you do not have any kind any other experience to mention then you can definitely mention that in your resume and tell the hiring manager that uh, uh, no one provided me a certificate for that people are not really looking forward to your certificates uh, they will judge you from your 
uh, from the way you present yourself in the interview uh, if uh, let's say i am uh, in the previous job where i was working i was the head of operation so uh, i used to if there are a lot of people who mention they are expert in excel then i don't know why people use there are always people are uh, by always uh, trying to prove that they are an expert in any, uh, in any skill just mention the level that you or uh, that you really have why why you why you want to be an expert uh, expert okay so let's not get into it in, uh, into that debate so uh, i used to ask those people to just uh, take the computer they can use internet uh, and they can help me solve a very basic excel problem they are allowed to use chat gpt and everything if they are able to uh, justify their claim that they are an expert in excel so that's fine for me i do not need any certificate i do not i i'm i, uh, I do not care what kind of experience they have if they are able to do the job that's all that i require can i use my internship at the university as my professional experience yes you can use your internship experiences Also, want to know can we make a bit of exercises table format? Uh, I am not really sure about the Europa CV. I have no experience in scholarships, so I cannot really comment on the scholarship or Europa anything like that. So, I don't know if you can like. use a table format or not this is uh, i've never seen one but if it is looking nice you can use it i'm not really i've not i've, I've never seen a resume with the uh what do you say I've, i've never seen a resume using a table so not sure what to say about this Should we highlight our distinction or gold medal in our CV or LinkedIn? Uh, Avas, it depends on the organization you are applying for. For educational institutes, for uh, lecture positions, or for academic positions, yes, you can mention your gold medal. And uh, but I would not really recommend in the private or startup sector. But yeah, but yes, you can mention that on your LinkedIn. How we learn skills? You know, she doesn't have any experience in skills. So how do we get? Achha. You can learn skills from. You can do certification. Again, uh, it depends on person to person. People. Some are able to learn it from YouTube. Some are. Able, some people need uh, direct mentorship. So, find relevant institutes who are teaching skills and get a certification. Uh, another thing I would like to mention is, no matter how many courses you do. if you are not practicing those courses then uh, uh there is not really for example you have done a one year course on excel and if you have not practiced uh, excel is not really your skill a course is not a skill practice is a skill even uh, if i i've been working on excel for 4 5 years but even if i leave it for a month or so when uh, after a month or so i have to apply the same formula again i have to think about it so it is really about the hands on there should be another another session ikra i cannot answer this question nurul huda or maybe someone from the women ascension can answer this question so if there is another session i am always up for it sure ikra we will consider your suggestion uh, baki i would like uh, if you can share sir sir if you can share some tips of how we can uh, write our uh, you know the ex experience or the statements that we are writing starting with the summary word so again, because every a... field has different keywords so uh, the 
general uh, it's okay so i would like to conclude in 5 minutes because i have to be somewhere else uh, so like i will be maybe this is the last question or second last question okay so uh, you can start with an action verb so action verb is uh, you can uh, just google it but is action verb let's say hired is an action verb uh, re uh, recruited is an action verb recruited not recruitment recruited uh, then led is an action verb participated is an action verb you can start with these action verbs to show that you have done something then uh, let's say led a team of five members that shows that you have led a team of five to six members okay let me change the example i guess i have given this example too many times okay uh, okay so let's say if i'm uh, giving uh, let's say if i'm writing experience about this session that we conducted today i will be saying that i uh, conducted a workshop for 60 individuals uh yeah this this is how you can start so usually i would get to take more time but i will just uh, i'm just saying what is coming in right now in my mind trend it is give me a second when i am writing this down i need a separate space to think it's not something that i can thing on top of my mind okay so i would say conducted a work to resume writing for 16 participants this is how you can start uh, then again i can mention the time frame how how much time did it take then i would be focusing on what kind of results that achieved so uh, let's say i get a feedback i get i ask for a feedback after like let's say two or three weeks and four people say that we got a job or an internship because of this webinar then that would be my result or my achievement so i would be mentioning that in my resume so now you see you have started with an action verb you mentioned uh, i mentioned uh, i started with an action verb i mentioned how many people i uh, trained then i will mention what kind of results did this workshop achieve so uh, if i say 50, 50 out of 60 people got the job that would be a straight out lie this is not something that can happen this is uh, even the best trainers in the world uh, best trainers in the world they uh, they will not be able to achieve these kind of results in, in a, from a work, one hour workshop so uh, i hope i was able to explain it start with an action verb uh, explain how many people you were able to tra uh, train or uh, impact or what kind of sales you were able to generate Uh, it is difficult to uh, give example for every field out there but you can follow this format or maybe you can just uh, send me your uh, uh field and we can discuss about it how you can do it you know it will also help you in getting the right reviews yes. I am master in English, but I don't know how I should so invite me. Uh, Sara, that maybe try using LinkedIn job section. Uh, no, if you don't have any questions, can we wrap it up? Yeah, sure. Uh, we can conclude the session now. If you got still any have any query, you can reach out to us, and uh, you can reach out to LinkedIn as well. Uh, we will share the links of uh, Women Ascension Skill Quest and our speaker, so you can mention uh, it on your LinkedIn. If you want to share your feedback, then you can do so. And if you have any query that is not addressed so far, then I will open the group chat as well, so you can drop it there, and the speaker will address them. So we can conclude the session now. Thank you so much, sir Asad, for sharing your uh, 
incredible and insightful knowledge and i'm sure everyone learned a lot today so i greatly appreciate your time and effort and uh, you can leave and all participants they can also leave i will uh, share the just the details and links in the group okay thank you for the invitation you're welcome allah with everyone take care to the international participants we have here